I'm going to be honest with you, this is the fifth time I've recorded this video because it just ends up being too long, so I'm going to try one more time to keep this brief. In amateur radio, there are two favorite most used bands, and those are 2 meters and 70 centimeters. 2 meters is VHF, 70 centimeters is UHF. You're probably familiar with GMRS. You may not know that GMRS is just a little bit higher in frequency than UHF in amateur radio. It's a little bit higher than 70 centimeters, and so it behaves very much like 70 centimeters in amateur radio. And so if you don't have a technician's license, you've got the 440 thing covered around 450 megahertz-ish. Uh, it behaves as if uh, it were uh, a V8, you know, an amateur radio, right in that, that 70 centimeter range as far as behavior, which means uh, GMRS is good for congested areas, dense forests, crowded cities, things like that. It has penetrating ability, but it's not great for long distances. And so when you find yourself in those kind of situations, GMRS is the way to go, and that's, that's amateur radios would use um, 70 centimeters for that. The other favorite amateur radio band is 2 meters. 2 meters is very different. It's 144 to 148 megahertz, much lower than GMRS, and therefore it travels over long distances. You can communicate to the horizon if you get the antenna up high enough, so like 30 miles. Um, a lot of people who are, you know, sort of including radio emergency communications in their, in their emergency preparations aren't aware that there's something like that two meters that has the capabilities of long distance. Um, they're just really focusing on GMRS, which, as I said, works in some situations, but not all. That's why amateur radio has two favorite bands, 20, 70 centimeters and two meters. There is something called MIRS, the um, multi-use radio service. It's free, and it's just above the amateur radio two meter band which means it behaves like a two meter radio long distances but it doesn't like clutter so if you're communicating over water or open space country things like that uh, it will behave like two meters you get the antenna high enough you can communicate to the horizon probably not with gmrs so the reason amateur radio has two favorite bands is because wherever you find yourself whatever your situation is one of these is going to do and that's why when you hear dual band radio those dual bands, those two bands, are generally 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And so these Quenchangs and Baofengs are capable of 2 meters and 70 centimeters and a lot of other stuff. But the same radio that you would, that you would buy um, for that purpose also does mirrors and GMRS. And so one radio will cover both. There you have it. You can have the same capabilities as you would have as an amateur radio uh, license holder without having to have the license. I'm not telling you to not get the license because there are some other advantages. Two meters and four, uh, 70 centimeters have um, a vast repeater network, for example. But we're talking about emergency communications. And my feeling is that most people that are like, you know, call themselves preppers aren't really interested in the need for repeaters. That's exactly what they're trying to get around. They want direct, reliable communications. Now, GMRS has 22 channels and that sounds good, but here's the problem. You probably know you're supposed to have a license, um, which you can purchase for GMRS. You may or may not. doesn't matter to me. What does matter is that if you're relying on GMRS for your emergency communications, when an emergency occurs, you're not going to be able to use it. There are billions of FRS and GMRS radios out there. If there's a true communications emergency, you're not going to have a chance communicating through GMRS. Nobody's going to know who they're talking to. It's just going to be a mess, absolute congestion. There are too many of these out there. There are situations where it might work if you're in an isolated area and you're not worried about that kind of overkill with so many people using the system. There are times when it'll work, but it shouldn't be the only, the only trick in your bag of tricks. In amateur radio, we have that second trick in our bag of tricks, two meters. Well, if you add mirrors to this, then you've got the capability of that long distance, and you can do it in one radio. I just want to show you real quick here. Uh, Radioddity has a website concerning mirrors. I don't recommend you buy a mirrors radio, though. Buy a dual band radio like a Baofeng or a Quensheng that you can put the numbers into because when people sell mirrors radios, they, send, they, they charge a lot. Radioddity charges twice as much for a mirrors labeled radio than it does their dual band, and it's the same radio.
There are five channels, um, which again, you would say, well, that's not a whole lot. What well, in an emergency, how will I communicate? Well, the reason you'll be able to communicate better in an emergency is that no one uses mirrors. Walmart is the largest user of mirrors that exists and they're pretty much the only ones using it and they use these here they use the old business band blue and green dot so if you listen to four and five in walmart you'll probably hear store communications but probably won't hear those communications outside of the parking lot because mirrors is not a penetrating frequency so it works in the store well enough but it's not going to once it gets through those walls it's not going anywhere okay so there are five channels, and although that doesn't sound like a lot, you are allowed to use tones, just like you can use on GMRS, you can use tones. So you can use those privacy channels to make this more manageable in an emergency. You're just not going to have the traffic and all the background noise if you use it. Just a couple things to be aware of. Uh, the first three that are not uh, blue and green, uh, mirrors one, two, and three, are FM narrow band, and your radio will be programmed programmable from narrow to wide. You're only allowed to use narrow band on these top three. The frequency bandwidth, um, the bandwidth is 11.25 kilohertz. That's narrow. Regular wide band is 20 kilohertz, almost double. So the bottom channels, two, uh, I'm sorry, four and five, you can use just normal FM wide band, and that's fine. But to be legal, you need to keep these top three narrow band. Two watts is the maximum legal output, and I'm going to leave it at that. The one thing I want to be, want you to be aware of, though, is take, don't take this seriously here. Radiotity has decided that Mirrors 1, Channel 1, is the call channel. Two is the safety channel, not sure what they mean. Three is the emergency channel. And then they've just said four and five is the everything channel. There's no such thing. This is nonsense. Not enough people use mirrors that there's a um, that there's any sort of um, frequency use agreement. Uh, you're free to use any channel you want for whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Nobody's following any sort of chart like this. Calling, just randomly calling on any channel on mirrors, you're unlikely to get anybody anyway. There's nobody listening. It's business band. It's used in businesses, during business, if they use it at all. They probably bought cheap FRS or GMRS radios for that purpose. So mirrors is wide open, and it behaves uh, like two meters for distance. So something to think about. Um, you don't need a special license. You don't need to do anything. Just put these codes in your radio. Um, use the channels as you see fit. Now, the reason I made this video is because there's that argument in, in emergency communications that, well, in an emergency, I can use ham radio frequencies if I want to. And I'm not going to even get into that legal argument, which is flawed, but I'm going to get into the, um, to the, technical, the technical side of that. Two meters and 70 centimeters are government-mandated emergency communications frequencies. There's an entire community throughout the world that uses amateur radio frequencies in designated emergencies. And in the U.S., those designated emergencies are actually um, set by government protocols and work in conjunction with government organizations. And so when an emergency happens, if your plan is to say, oh, I'll just use the, the amateur bands because I'm allowed to in an emergency, it's not going to work. Those bands are already going to be in heavy use. And the people using them are going to be heavily qualified. Their equipment is going to be superior. Their power output is going to be far greater than yours. And you're going to get ignored because they have formal traffic that they're passing. They're not just picking up the phone and answering it. Uh, those frequencies are going to be in heavy use. So if you're relying on that, it's not going to work. You, you got nothing. You haven't fixed your communications issue. If you're relying on GMRS, you're saying, well, I don't need to do that. I can just use GMRS. That might be true, but there are billions of these. You're going to have a very difficult time communicating when everyone realizes that this is the only thing in their house that actually works. Mirrors is going to be much easier to use. You're going to be able to communicate better if you can get kind of out of the uh, congested areas and into some open space, Mirrors is going to do the job. So between the two of these, you're set. No need to tread on frequencies you're not supposed to be on. It would be pointless anyway. Get familiar with these. Use them. Have fun with them. Uh, I love Mirrors because nobody uses it. Um, I have no use for it either because nobody else uses it, but it's, it's cool. Notice that I've had the radio on the whole time. Mirrors 5, there's a Walmart three quarters of a mile from here. We haven't heard a thing. So... Uh, they're using it in-store, but it's not penetrating that building and getting outside. 
and it's not designed to do that. But if I were in country open space, I could communicate to the horizon with this if I had a tall enough antenna. So you have the capabilities of amateur radio as far as a technician class. Go ahead and get the test, take the test, get the license if you want. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that if you choose not to, rather than treading on, you know, into a legal quagmire, just use these because they're the same thing. Before I end this, I just want to say um, I make these videos just because. Uh, if I have information that I think people aren't very aware of, I like to just get it out of my head. Um, I have posted quite a few videos lately that people seem very interested in, and what we have is lots and lots of views. People, I, I posted one about the VCG here. People haven't heard of this. Lots of views on this. So I never intended this YouTube channel to be a YouTube channel, but it's becoming one. And if we get to 500 subscribers, it becomes an official one. And that would allow me to maybe make more videos, go out and buy those new radios and do in-depth reviews, um, find that rare equipment, um, come up with those cool projects like I recently uh, put out there about how to make a, uh, how to make a cross-band repeater with two quenchengs and just the wires that it came with. Stuff like that. I could continue to do that if we get to 500 subscribers, so I'm going to be that guy. Please like and subscribe. I hate saying that. Never thought I'd be saying that. But if you do subscribe, it's going to help to maybe make some more videos like this. Um, and, of course, if there's something you want a video made about, I'd be able to say, hey, I'm going to go out and get that, and we'll see how that works so that you don't have to spend the money to find out if you like it or not. All my reviews tend to be in-depth. I never make an, an unboxing I know a lot of times people unbox a radio and then they play with it. They don't know how it works. Well, how's that helpful to you? They don't know how it works. They're turning it on. They're going, and that's the review. They, don't even, they haven't done anything. When I talk about a radio or equipment, I go in depth. I've already figured out how it works before I get started, and I'm seeing that that's kind of rare in these radio reviews. So um, for that reason, I'd ask you to like um, and share, too. Uh, the more people see them, the better. So 7-3 and happy prepping.